Might as well could be time to give my own two cents about the Tuka Rass situation too, but I wanted to talk about this in a video not only talking about Tuka Rask's departure from the Boston Bruins and the Toronto bubble in general, but potentially about Tuka Rask's departure from Boston in a bigger bigger sense. So if you haven't been catching up with the hockey world, then you probably missed this because it's probably been the biggest story in hockey over the past few days. But Boston Bruins starting goaltender Tuka Rask has opted out of the bubble. It was released by the Boston Bruins that, hey, you know, the guy's got a newborn, he's got kids at home, he's got a wife, he's got a family that he wants to attend to, and... You know, he's leaving the bubble because of that. And to me, honestly, let him do what he wants. That's fine. He has the ability to opt out. The team is supporting him. The coach is supporting him. His teammates are supporting him, regardless of what other people are speculating as to what the teammates could be doing in regards to this situation. I do believe it is truthful when they say that they are supporting Tuka Rask. And at the end of the day, what Tuka Rask is doing is he's putting his family above hockey. And that's okay. That is a fine, fine thing. And for anybody out there who's talking about how Otuka abandoned his team, oh, he did this, he did that, he's making $7 million a year, he should suck it up and just go with what the rest of his teammates are doing. Hey man, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know everything that's going on in Tuka Rask's head. Not everybody who is in a situation is going to respond to it the same way. So obviously, because people are different, just because everybody else in the bubble would be okay with staying does not mean that Tuka Rask himself would be okay with staying either. And furthermore, there are probably a few other players who want to secretly leave the bubble as well to go home to their families because, hey, in these weird trying times, family is indeed important. But what I wanted to talk about was not the fact that Tuka Rask left the Boston Bruins. In fact, it's not even the fact that the Bruins actually won without Tuka Rask and are now currently leading their series 2-1. to one. We have ourselves a different idea brought up at hand on the Boston Globe. This is a website on bostonglobe.com. It's written by Kevin Paul Dupont, and it's titled this. The Boston Bruins are sympathetic, but they know it's time to move on from Tuka Rask. So what this video is asking is, hey, have we seen Tuka Rask's last game played with the Boston Bruins? The article is indeed behind a paywall, but I will leave a link in the description to this article. But what we're going to actually read here is the Spectre's Hockey article from Sunday, August 16th, which talks about the same ideas that are shared in this Boston Globe article. Take a look at this, it's on Spectre's Hockey, I'll leave a link in the description to this as well. Kevin Paul Dupont suggests it might be time for the Bruins and goaltender Tuka Rask to part ways. This comes in the wake of Rask's decision to return home for family reasons. While the club is supportive of the goalie's decision, and Dupont is also sympathetic, the pundit points out this isn't the first time he's taken a leave of absence for family reasons. Rask has one season left on his contract at $7 million. But Dupont feels the Bruins cannot have uncertainty between the pipes, especially in the starter's position. He notes the Bruins can trade the netminder to one of the 15 teams on the list he was obligated to provide in February. He believes Bruins GM Don Sweeney will be working the phones. And upon reading this, I thought to myself, hmm, okay, Tuka Rask, leaving, Boston, all this stuff combined, where have I heard this before? Yeah, I have heard this before. Literally four months ago, we made a YouTube video talking about the rumors of Tuka Rask potentially retiring after this season or after his contract ends up. And there were a whole bunch of rumors going on about that too. People have also talked about whether or not Tuka Rask is going to go back to Finland and play there, finish his career there, or continue playing in the NHL with a different team. But Overall, when you talk about Tuka Rask, what you're talking about is literally one of the best goalies we've had in this generation, and I don't think that's really hyperbole over here. A Vesna winner, three-time Stanley Cup finalist, Stanley Cup champion, Tuka Rask is one of, if not the best Finnish goalies ever. It's just kind of funny how he was drafted by Toronto. And the fact is, he's 33 years old, which isn't too old, like, normally goalies who are 33 can still compete in the NHL, and to me there's honestly no doubt that next year Tuka Rask could probably compete in the NHL. 
It's just a matter of his own personal preferences. And if you take a look today at how he left the bubble, combined with the comments he had a few days ago where he said, yeah, you know, it doesn't really feel like playoff hockey. It feels like an exhibition game. There's no fans, etc. You know, it's fair to understand the idea that Tuka Rask's head, his heart, may just not be in it 110%. Now, we don't want to say it like that's a bad thing. Tuka Rask in his most previous game played, sure, he lost, but that loss against Carolina certainly wasn't his fault. In fact, he kind of gave his team a chance to win it, didn't he? But being capable to perform and being willing to perform are two different things. And sure, Tuka Rask may be capable as anybody to compete in the bubble and play hockey, and maybe even compete next year too. But if his head's just not in it, then DuPont's kind of right. It's better to have that certainty and instead go with the guy that you know wants to win every single game, play his heart out, and has his mind in the game between the pipes instead. And besides, it's not even like Yaro Halak is a bad goalie. He's pretty good, one of the better backups in the entire NHL. He would be a starter on many NHL teams, in my opinion, still. But if it's time to let go of Tuca, whether that's an early retirement or a trade request, a straight-up buyout or a mutual contract termination with the purpose of him going back home, then the Bruins are still gonna be okay. And I know it's not often to see things like this happen, but... Hey man, not everybody is going to have the same approach, the same mentality, and the same comfort level in the game of hockey as they go forward with their careers, especially somebody who has a few children and a wife back home whom he hasn't been able to see in a long time. Is he a millionaire making millions of dollars playing hockey? Yes, but he's still a human being as well too, which is why so many people have come out and said, yeah, I support Tuka Rask, I totally understand where he's coming from. But if it is a trade, which is probably the most interesting route over here, I'm honestly quite interested into how a player like Tuka Rask would deal with it. Because if the entire reason Tuka wants to leave Boston is because he wants to go back home, then the Bruins would pretty much only be trading him or his rights just to get that contract out of their system. That's it. He's got a year left. It's not like this is a three, four, five year deal wherein they're going to be freeing up the money for those next few years. This is literally just one move that they could do to free up their pipes, give Yarrow Halak the full reign he deserves, give Tuka the peace of mind that he owes nothing anymore to the organization that he's a part of, and probably just sacrifice like a seventh round pick or something on it too. I could see something like, okay, the Bruins trade Tuka Rask and a second round pick to some team X in exchange for a fifth round pick. In a situation where Tuka Rask has made it clear that he wants to stay in Finland or retire early or do a buyout or something. Because let's face it, the fact that every team in the league knows what's going on with Tuka Rask, it devalues his overall case towards getting pieces back for Boston. This is similar to what we talked about with the Mitch Marner situation a few days ago, how every GM and their mother knows that Mitch Marner is in some hot water with the Toronto media, the Maple Leafs fans, and the organization. So whether or not there's a Marner trade on the horizon, all the buying power is taken away from the Leafs if they try to negotiate here. So, for Tuka Rask and his future, I honestly would not be surprised if a year from now we're sitting here and we're saying, yeah, that was a great career that Tuka Rask had, a great run. He ended off his previous few years with a finals run, a Vesna Trophy nomination, and a Vesna Trophy earlier in like 2014 or whatever. And I think anybody can look at that and say, yeah, you know, it's pretty accomplished, pretty good, pretty solid, but ultimately, family comes first. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about this whole Tuka Rask situation. If you were to predict what's going to happen next, what would you say? Do you think there's a buyout coming? Do you think there's a mutual contract termination? Do you think there's a trade? Do you think Tuka Rask reports to the Bruins and he plays out his entire 2020-2021 contract and then just rides off into the sunset after that? In my opinion, probably the most unlikely situation is he plays out the contract and then he gets an extension because just the way this whole discourse has been going, I would be really surprised if he goes a year or two more in Boston just because of how everybody is talking about it. But let me know in the comments what you think about this situation as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.